Praise the Lord. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you because of the shedding of his blood. And had it not been for the shedding of his blood, we, our sins have, would not be remitted. Every day, every day, I thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ. I would that those of you that have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 12 and 14, and then I'm going to drop down to verses 20 and 21. And these scriptures reads as thus. And on the morrow, when they were come from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves, he came, if haply he might find anything thereon. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the time of the figs was not yet. Verses 20 and 21. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to his remembrance, saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. I want to use for a subject from those verses read, I want to use the cursed one. The cursed one. When we see the word curse, the word curse just simply means rejected. The story of the fig tree in the book of Mark is divided into two sections, but we take it as one. The first part of the story happened to be on the morning of one day, and the second part happened on the morning of the second day. But as we try to see the meaning of the story, we must take it as one. Note, Jesus never used his power for his own sake. He did not turn the stone into bread to satisfy his own hunger. He did not use his power to escape from his enemies. But he used his power to blast a tree which had disappointed him when he was hungry. Please keep in mind that this was not the season for fig trees to bear figs. Even though the tree had fig tree leaves. This was not the season. Why curse the tree for failing to do what it was not possible for it to do? To save the situation, one commentator said what Jesus was looking for was green figs. Half ripe figs is their early stage, but unripe fruit was unpleasant and was never to be eaten. In reading this story, to me, this do not sound like Jesus. If we take this story as if this really happened, we must take it as an enacted parable. Again, we must take it as an enacted parable. 
if we take it that way, it may be interpreted as the condemnation of two things. First, it is the condemnation of promise without fulfillment. The leaves on the tree might be taken as the promise of fruit, but there was no fruit there. It is the condemnation of especially of the children of Israel. All their history was a preparation of the coming of the Messiah. The whole promise of their record was when the chosen one came and they would be eager to receive him. Israel waited for the promise of the Messiah. But when he did come, that promise was fulfilled. Thank God, thank God for the fulfillment of the promise. Second, it is the condemnation, a profession without practice. It might be taken that the tree with its leaves professed to offer something and did not offer. They cried out of the New Testament that a man can be only known by the fruit of his life. Matthew chapter 7 verse 16 says, you will know them by their fruit. Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 says, it is not the man who will cry, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom, but the one that does the will of God. A lesser man's salvation make him a better and more useful man. It is not salvation at all. No man can claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ and remain entirely unlike Jesus, whom he professed to love. Listen, in order to be a Christian, you must remember the word Christian means to be Christ-like. In order for you to be a Christian, you must be like Christ or have the characteristics of Christ. Some of us, some of us, is this curse a fig tree? We are bearing leaves. We are bearing leaves, but no fruit. We can quote Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23, which is we could known as the fruit of the Spirit. No, I did not say the fruits. I didn't say fruits, but the fruit of the Spirit. Check your tree out. Check out your own tree. Do you have love, joy? Peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and self-control. Examine yourself to see if you have the following. The fruit of the Spirit is spontaneous, spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit in you. The Spirit produces these characteristics, traits that are found in the nature of Christ. As I just said, we must follow the nature of Christ 
in order to be called Christians. They are by product of Christ's control. We cannot obtain by trying to get them without his help. We cannot have the following without the help of God. And let me pause and say this. It is so important. It is so important that you have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I know we are living in a time where people think or feel that it's not necessary to have the Holy Ghost. We cannot be what we ought to be in Christ without the Spirit of God within us. The Bible says the Holy Ghost come to lead and guide us to all truth and righteousness. And when we go to the book of Acts chapter 2, it tells us of the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I know, I know we got people that believe and teach that tongues is not necessary. But that's the only sign that you have is speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give you utterance. And let me say this too. I know there are those that believe and teach that you can speak in tongues at will. That is not Bible. I repeat, the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost is speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. And when we look at that word utterance, the word utterance means ability. We do not speak in tongues on our own, but we speak as the Spirit of God give us the ability to speak. We cannot obtain by trying to get them without the help. If we want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us, we must join our life to the life of Christ. Note John chapter 15 verses 4 and 5 which reads as follows Abide in me and I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine no more can ye except Ye abide in me, and I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abide in me, and I in him, the same bring forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Without me, you can do, may I say it this way, you can do no thing. We must know him. We must love him. And we must remember him. And imitate. In other words, we got to act like him. As a result, we will fulfill the intended purpose of the law to love God in our neighbors may I ask which of these qualities do you want the Spirit of God to produce in you let us not be as the fig tree that bore no fruit if we fail to bring forth fruit, we will be cursed or we will be
be rejected. I do not want to be cursed or to be rejected, but I want my life to be placed or settled in the will of God where God can see the fruit in my life. It has been said, the greatest message or the greatest sermon that you can preach is not on what you say, but by what you do. In other words, my life can produce the greatest message beyond words. We must, we must live a godly, holy, sanctified life. The latter word that I use, sanctified, is a word that we used to use years ago, years ago. You don't hear that word sanctified anymore. I know people thought that when you use the word sanctified, you're talking about a denomination. The word sanctified is not speaking of a denomination. Y'all remember years ago when the saints of God were we rejoicing, doing what we call the holy dance, and I don't have no problem using the word dance because that's what we're doing. I know we say shouting, but when you say shout, that's verbal. When we go forth and the dance is dancing. And they used to talk about the sanctified church. Yes, we were sanctified because the word sanctified simply means separation. We are separated from the customs of the world. The Bible said, love not the world, nor the things of the world, or the love of the Father is not in you. Come out from among them and be separated or be sanctified, saith the Lord. Again, may I say, people of God, be encouraged. Let your fruit bloom. Let your light shine because you do not want to be cursed. Or shall I say, you do not want to be rejected when Jesus come. Oh yes, I, I gotta put emphasis on that. I can't say that enough. He's coming, he's coming. And only those that have prepared themselves will go back with the Lord when he come. I pray a word has been said this morning that your heart has been touched and encouraged. Shall we pray? Father, in Jesus' name, again, we bless you for this day. We thank you for the people of God now, God, I pray that a word again has been blessed, the hearts of the people, and help us to be ready when you come, because we do not want to be rejected, but we do want to hear these words on our behalf. Well done, thou good and thou faithful servant. This is our request in Jesus' name. Again, people of God, may the blessings of God be upon you. May you be encouraged. And may you have a blessed day and a blessed week. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you.